Hello everybody. So I don't know if you noticed this, but this chapter actually started with a little bit of a recap in the beginning. In fact, even, even the cover page I considered to be a recap because we kind of already knew that Cavendish was kind of a lady killer. We, we found that out back in Dressrosa, so it would, it would make sense that he would be a lady killer when he was a little kid too. We got Caesar with Brule setting up the mirror for the escape, and he says, I think this is Caesar by the way, uh, but let me know. So there's a panel, uh, the, the last panel of the third page, he says, okay, this is the keystone of the escape plan, so obviously Brule, they're going to know it's your power, you idiot. Like, who else can, like, manipulate mirrors like you can? So he says, like, once I complete the mission, I can get my heart back. And when that happens, you'll get yours, you bastards. That's actually Caesar saying that, right? So I guess he's still kind of resentful about the whole heart thing. Which is, which is interesting, because I actually thought that he was, like, gradually warming up to the Straw Hats. But I guess not. And then we get that little mini recap thing with Luffy, which, to be honest, kind of felt like I was watching the anime. It's kind of like, oh, like, you know, this is what I need to do. Get the fragments and show it to Big Mom. And it's like, yes, Luffy, I remember last week's chapter. Uh, so, yeah, it, it just felt like a, a little bit of an anime episode there. Uh, but anyway, and I think the reason for that, I think the reason why Oda decided to do the recap is because... He really wanted to end the chapter with the Big Mom flashback introduction. So in order for him to do that, I think he needed a little bit of, uh, of time to stall with some panels there. Uh, and by the way, I mean, just knowing what we know of, of the flashback, this may be one of the most important flashbacks in the entire series. I'm just going to say this. Most flashbacks in One Piece are not happy. In fact, most of them are tragic. And you saw the way this flashback started. So I'm just going to say this. Oda... If you make me sympathize with this monstrous blob of a woman, just don't do it. Please, please. I mean, no, no. Because, <sighs> in fact, in fact, I'm pretty sure you're going to do that. I know by the end of this flashback, I'm going to feel something for Big Mom that I, that I didn't know was possible. Here's the thing about the flashback taking place in Elbaf. Because uh, I, I know there's still that question of, like, you know, the fandom kind of wants to know, will Big Mom, you know, be taken down this arc? And, in fact, I think... The, the mere presence of that flashback to me pretty much confirms that, and I, I, I felt pretty confident about this before, but I think just the fact that we're getting this flashback, I know it would make sense for it to be, yeah, she's going to be taken down because she's already having the sad flashback, so usually that's how it works in Shonen. You get the sad flashback, you get some closure, and then you get defeated. But, if anything, the flashback kind of makes me think that Big Mom's character arc has to end where it started, which is Elbaf. So I don't think she's coming down this arc at all. In fact, I think this flashback is going to be a short flashback because I don't think Oda wants to reveal too much. So I think it's going to be almost like an incomplete flashback that he can later expand on once we actually get to Elbaf. Especially because we know that the Giants have some type of a broken ass hidden power in their island. Remember what she said about the marriage with Loki? Big Mom said, okay, if that marriage with Lola and Loki had worked out, I would have had the power to take down the rest of the Yonko. I would be the pirate queen right now. So just prepare yourself for Big Mom's half-giant tragic backstory. Because it's about to start. And uh, so, anyway, going back to the present, Katakuri goes in there. And you know, I, I gotta hand it to him. He was putting in the work. It's like he's the only one doing anything. I mean, at least from Big Mom's side. It's like he's by himself. Nobody else helps him out. Not even Smoothie. I mean, th this chapter, this chapter didn't make Smoothie look good. I'll say that. It's like, Smoothie, come on. Come on, get up, girl. Put in the work. So Katakuri is like, you know, ninja style running. He's like, passes by Pedos Pedro. He's like, Pedos Pedro, take care of the job. End the bin smokes now. And Pedos Pedro just loves to talk. So, you know, instead of actually doing the job that he's supposed to do, he's just like, sure, I'll kill them. But first, let me give you this cliche villainous monologue of mine so that you have a little bit more time to escape. And uh, so he does that. And, uh, you know, Judge is complaining about the raid suits. And Reiju is noticing that Sanji is trying his best to get... To, to the family table, and Daifuku is like slamming his head onto the ground. And I think that was a really, really key panel because it kind of helps you forget about Sanji, and then he comes back and it's like an epic entrance. And there's this whole internal monologue from Reiju talking about how she's felt ashamed of carrying the Vinsmoke name, but now that she sees how good of a person Sanji actually is, like she, she feels less bad about it. It's kind of like, you know, Sanji's kind of cleaning up the name for her. So there's a sense of redemption through Sanji that the Vince Smoke name will get at the end. So, and it kind of kind of works because she looks so so much like her mom that to me at least it kind of felt like this thing had like double meaning in a way because it's not just like Reiju talking about her brother. It also felt like it was Sanji's mom talking about Sanji and how proud they both are 
uh, of him. Then we have this great action sequence with Katakuri. Capone actually shoots him in the face. And I've said this before, but I think the best way that you can visualize Katakuri's Devil Fruit ability is that you think of Luffy's Devil Fruit ability, but think about it being stickier and detachable. So the bullets actually hit him in the face, and, you know, he's not a normal Logia. And so you can see the bullets just gradually coming out of his face, like he's Wolverine or something. Anyway, he's like, okay, so uh, he makes it seem as if he's about to attack Capone with a kick, but he's actually aiming for Luffy. Pedro comes in cuts the kick, and Jinbei comes in with a punch. And this is actually one of the most confusing panels uh, that I've seen thus far in terms of action in One Piece because I don't know if Jinbei's attack actually lands and then the Mochi Mochi just splatters or if Katakuri was able to dodge Jinbei's attack and Jinbei's just hitting dead air. I don't know what... Ha I'm assuming that the Katakuri was able to dodge before the attack landed. Uh, but the beauty of it is that it doesn't really matter all that much because what Katakuri was doing with Pedro and Jimbei was, was a distraction. It was a decoy because he already knew where Luffy was going to run. So when Luffy's running, he notices with observation hockey that there's like this statue of Mochi Mochi and that's where Katakuri comes in. So Katakuri already knew that he would be there at that point in time because he can see the future. So the whole thing with Pedro and, and Jimbe, that was just to distract them. Uh, and he was waiting for Luffy to run by anyway. So that was just really brilliant planning from Katakuri to be there at the right time so that Luffy would run by and he would actually try and stop him. However, that scene also illustrates the limits to Katakuri's power. So Katakuri, the feature that he saw was Luffy running by him, and so he was able to stop it that way. However, because he only saw that future, he was not able to see the fact that Luffy was going to stretch his arms to show Big Mom the shattered picture. So he stopped one thing, but he couldn't predict what, he didn't see what Luffy was going to do next. It's the exact same thing that happened with the jelly bean and Sanji. Katakuri only saw one thing that time. He saw the fact that Sanji was going to be able to dodge the shot from the priest, but he didn't look further into it. And it's the same thing that happened here. He saw the moment of Luffy running by him and him slamming him to the ground, but he didn't see the fact that he would stretch out his arms. Anyway, Luffy hands Big Mom the picture and the King's hockey explosion begins. And take a moment to appreciate the range of that thing. You get like this wide open shot of, of the top of the tower. You see buildings begin to collapse. Big News Morgans was able to withstand the hockey. Print that headline because I thought that was pretty impressive. And then also, you, you got this shot of all the fodder being cleared out. That's one of the good things, right? The fodder, just, just get out. You're done. We also get this shot of Luffy on the ground covering his ears, which at first I thought was very surprising because it's like, wait, like is, is, is the King's hockey so strong that it's doing this to Luffy? But I think it's very important to make the distinction that it's not just the King's hockey, it's also the shriek, it's the scream, it's the noise. Uh, so I think that, that explains Luffy's reaction a little bit better. And then again, he's also the person who's closest to Big Mom. Like in terms of proximity, he's the closest to her. So that, that could also explain something. Brooke has no ears. So I'm pretty sure that's going to be used as a gag later on. Also, I want to take a moment. Look at the Vin Smokes. You got the shot of the five Vin Smokes. And I want, I want you to pay attention to Judge, Niji, and Yonji. So look at their faces. They're like cringing, right? They're like, ah. Here's a funny thing about that, all right? Judge has a helmet on, and both Niji and Yonji have headphones on. So you would think those things would kind of help buffer a little bit of Big Mom so that they're not as affected, but they're still cringing. Reiju and Ichiji have nothing on, and yes, you can tell that they're a little uncomfortable, all right? They're not, they're not having a field day, they're not really happy, but they're holding it down. So I definitely think that Ichiji and Reiju are like, you know, the, the, the top Vin Smokes, uh, not including Sanji, of course. Uh, and I think that was actually alluded to before when they were looking at the books, you know, Big Mom's collection. I think a, a character said, oh, like I've always admired the Vin Smokes or something, especially Reiju and Ichiji. I don't care what anybody says, those two are pretty boss in my book. Uh, anyway, we see, I think it's Mondur, uh, he's falling to the ground, but I don't, I don't know for sure if he's knocked out. Probably not. Uh, anyway, uh, Vito and Gotti come out of Capone, and they have the rocket launchers ready. Big Mom falls to the ground, scrapes her knee, starts bleeding, so obviously this means that her armament hockey defense has deactivated. Capone is like, we're all clear, boys. 
Now let's kill this blob and go home. Chopper gives Reiju and the rest of the Vin Smoke some earplugs. And then we have Sanji using his Diablo Jamba to just crack the candy. And like a boss standing on top of that table like, Who's the weak leg now, mother? They get the raid suits back. Nami has her tempo ready. Carrot has her electro gloves. You know, you can see some of the sparks coming out of them. And I, I kid you not, this scene, when I was reading it and they break free, I literally had the theme from The Incredibles playing on in my head. Dun 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 dun. Then we go into flashback, Mother Caramel. Little, little big mom. Has to be, because it was 63 years ago. We get a shot of the Elbath Island, and you see like this dark thing. Like, I think that was intentional that we get half the island, but if you look at the, the edge of it, you see like this dark structure. It kind of looks like a tree almost, because it has something like a loop, like some type of a curve there. So, do you think it could be the Adam tree? We know where the Eve tree is, right? That's going down a, a Fishman Island. So, do you think this could be the Adam tree? I don't know, but it looks like this big ass structure. So I can't wait to see what that is. Can't wait to find out more about Elbath. And uh, yeah, it's going to be like a little, little Muppet baby Big Mom. Uh, I really want to see how she looked back then. It kind of sounds like she's complaining about people not paying attention to her, uh, which I guess means the Giants never really liked her to begin with. Maybe because she's half a giant and they didn't take her seriously. Maybe she was bullied or something. I don't know. Uh, what I hope this does for the future is that I hope we get a flashback for each of the Yonko. Overall, I thought that was a really, really good chapter of One Piece. Please let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. Like the video if you did. That really helps out. Subscribing helps out as well. Catch you guys later. Thanks for everything, guys. Bye.